Today I want to share with you a Mary's Nest 2022 channel update and fill you in on everything I have in store for this coming year. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now I've got a lot to share with you, but before we get started, I just want to say that if you open the description underneath this video, I'll have timestamps listing everything I'm going to cover. So if any time you want to jump around or jump ahead, you can certainly do that very easily by looking at those timestamps. The first thing I want to say is thank you so much for joining me on this traditional foods journey. When I first started my YouTube channel in the summer of 2018, I had no idea if anyone would be interested in learning about traditional foods cooking. And what exactly is traditional foods cooking? Well, it's all about learning how to make bone broth and cultured dairy and ferments and sourdough starter and sourdough bread and lots more, all the cooking that our ancestors did. And I was so pleased to realize that there are so many of you interested in learning about these skills and keeping these skills alive and teaching these skills to others as well. Now I know many of you have been with me since the beginning and you've learned how to master the basics of making these traditional foods such as we just discussed, bone broth, cultured dairy, so on and so forth. But if you're new here, I want to say welcome and I'm so glad that you're joining us on this traditional foods journey. And to those of you who are new here and may be beginners, I don't want you to worry and I don't want you to be overwhelmed by any of this. I have a very basic starter series of 15 videos where I teach you the basics of traditional foods cooking. These are very detailed and I take you step by step so it's perfect for the beginner. I show you how to make bone broth, all different types of bone broth. I show you how to make cultured dairy. I show you how to make ferments. I show you how to make a sourdough starter, what I like to call a foolproof sourdough starter. I show you how to make sourdough bread. And I show you how to soak and sprout grains and how to even make your own sprouted flour. And it's all very detailed and very step by step and perfect for the beginner. So if you are at the beginning of your journey moving from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen, be sure to start out with those 15 videos. And I have them all in a playlist to make it very convenient for you. And I'll be sure to link to it in the description underneath this video. And I know for some of you, depending on what device you're working on, it can be a little difficult for you to open the description, but I'll also put a link to that playlist in the pinned comment, which may be easier for you to reach. Now, some of you have asked me to explain what exactly do I mean when I use the words processed foods kitchen. Now, I have a full video where I go into a lot of detail about that, and I'll definitely link to that. Now, if I ever run out of room in the iCards or in the description, I'll always have plenty of room in a pinned comment underneath this video, and I'll have everything linked to there that I talk about. But basically, just a quick little overview is what I mean when I use the words processed foods kitchen are those kitchens where you are buying primarily all of your foods prepared. So you're buying bottled salad dressing, uh, bottled mayonnaise, ketchup. You're buying bread in the plastic sleeve in the liner at, at the grocery store. You're buying, um, you know, in the plastic sleeve liner <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the bread aisle at the grocery store. You're buying uh, frozen meals where maybe everything is prepared for you and so on and so forth. And what we want to do here is we want to move away from that and we want to move to a traditional foods kitchen where we're making as much as we can homemade. And I really want to take a minute here to speak to the beginner. Don't be overwhelmed and don't rush. It can take easily from one to two years to move on this journey from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen till you get to the point 
where you feel it's relatively easy for you to make tr traditional foods and then to use the traditional foods you're making and incorporate them into making meals. Now, over the last four years, and what are now over 400 free videos, we have covered a lot of subjects under the traditional foods umbrella. We started with mastering the basics. We spent time using those foods we learned how to make, using those traditional foods we learned how to make to create nutritious meals that our family and our friends and ourselves would enjoy. We also extended beyond just the creating of the traditional foods and meals and talked in great detail about how to stock the traditional foods pantry. This became very important during 2020 and 2021 and I have extensive playlists that I share with you on this topic of stocking the traditional foods pantry. And when it comes to stocking the traditional foods pantry, I like to refer to that as the Four Corners Pantry. And what do I mean by the Four Corners Pantry? I'm referring to those four areas where we keep our food. We start with our working pantry, that's maybe a closet or a cupboard in your kitchen that you access on a daily basis. Then there's your refrigerator, then your, there's your freezer, and then your fourth corner is your extended pantry, or what we sometimes nickname and call the prepper pantry. And basically your extended pantry is where you store non-perishable foods that allow you to restock your working pantry. And just a quick word as to why we want to have that extended pantry. And that is because, and especially what we learned during the last few years, is that if there are food shortages, if there is illness, if there is job loss, if there's bad weather, if there's a national emergency, whatever the case may be, you have a little bit of an insurance policy, even if it's just two weeks worth of food, to back up your working pantry so that you don't run out of food. And if you have not even started a prepper pantry, I don't want you to worry. I think those of you who have been with me for a while most likely have very well established traditional foods pantries, including your prepper pantry. But if you're new here, I have a playlist on how to start your prepper pantry, how to stock it with real food, things that you can buy right at your grocery store. You don't have to order any expensive foods, freeze-dried or, or um, uh, dehydrated, or whatever the case may be. These are just easy foods that you can buy at your grocery store. And then I also share how to do this on a budget. And this is not about panic buying or hoarding, nothing like that. This is simply adding a few extra dollars to your grocery budget every week to add a few extra items to what you are now starting uh, calling your extended pantry. And then little by little, you will be amazed at how quickly you will have two weeks of backup food. And then two months of backup food, six months of backup food, whatever you decide is an appropriate amount of backup food to have in your extended pantry to then uh, refresh, so to speak, your working pantry when that runs low in the event that there are different situations, health, emergencies, budget, job loss, so on and so forth, that may not allow you to do much shopping. But you've got your insurance policy in your extended pantry. And as I said, I have extensive playlists that cover all of this, as well as how to properly store your food. I received a lot of questions on that, and I have extensive videos on all the different storage options that make being able to preserve what you store uh, as long as possible. Now, in speaking about the entire Four Corners pantry, stocking your working pantry, your refrigerator, your freezer, and your extended pantry, I have a free 36-page traditional foods pantry list, uh, the essential traditional foods pantry list, that I will put a link to in the description below. It's totally free 
and you can click on that link. It'll take you over to my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, and you can read that online. You can download it and print it out. You can download it to your phone and take it to the grocery store with you. And I think you're going to find that exceptionally helpful because it's going to list for you by category all the different traditional foods that over time you will want to be stocking in your pantry. But it's so much more than just a list. I clearly say where these different foods need to be stored. I also have links to many recipes for all of the foods that I list that show you how to use these foods that you're going to be stocking to make traditional nutritious meals. Now while you're over on my website, I want to mention that I do have a newsletter that you can sign up for if you want. And I don't inundate you, so you don't have to worry, and I never sell your email. But I send out a weekly email, it's a weekly newsletter, where I uh, share with you a lot of helpful, or I hope that it will be very helpful information to you, all about traditional foods, as well as links to all of my latest videos. Now, also, in 2022, I will be updating all of my free ebooks. And so if you're signed up for my newsletter, you'll receive notification when I update all of those free ebooks so that you can get the latest information available. Now, in addition to learning how to master the basics and make traditional meals and how to stock our traditional foods pantry, I also show you how to make a lot of things for your traditional foods pantry that are homemade. So they're not even things that you have to buy. I show you how to make homemade cake mix. I show you how to make homemade pancake mix, how to make homemade gravy mix, how to make homemade soup mixes. And these are all shelf stable. And what's so nice about making these things homemade is that you can make them for a fraction of a cost of what it would cost to buy those foods already pre-made for you. But I also show you how to make them with much healthier ingredients. Plus, for those of you who have a gluten-free household, I have a video where I share with you many options for making gluten-free mixes. And when it comes to stocking your pantry with specific ingredients, I have a lot of videos where I talk about some of the best sweeteners to stock, some of the best, best salts to stock, really in great detail so that you can make educated decisions as to what you want to put in your traditional foods pantry. And you have a lot of options. For example, with sugars, you might have sucanat, which is simply the dried sugar cane juice. You might have coconut sugar, you might have maple syrup, date sugar, date syrup. There's a whole variety of things that you can choose from, and you don't need to have everything. You can pick and choose what you like to use and what flavors you like best, yet bring more nutrition than, say, just stocking white sugar in your pantry. And the same with salts. I have a very detailed video with lots of salts that I cover. And I talk about the concerns that many of you have shared with me about microplastics and how to find salts that are lowest in microplastic and salts that are best to use when you make ferments. Because as I've shared with you many times, ferments can be persnickety. And the more that we can do to guarantee our success, the better. And a lot of our success comes down to what type of salt we use. But what's so nice about living in modern times but trying to create a traditional foods kitchen is that many salts, many sweeteners, many different types of traditional foods in general are available right at our local grocery store. The variety sometimes is overwhelming. Now one thing I want to mention, I like to make things as easy for you as possible and I like to list ingredients that are, that are as easy to find at your local grocery store as possible. But some of you have told me that you really do like to order things online. And if that is something that you like to do, I highly recommend that you always check first on my website, on my shopping guide. And I'll be sure to put a link to that in the description below. 
in my shopping guide, I link to various online sources for traditional foods, but I also include for you discount codes. So I have discount codes to U.S. Wellness Meats, that where you can buy uh, grass-fed or, or bones from cattle that's been grass-fed if you have difficulty finding beef bones, as well as a whole host of meats and chickens and so on and so forth. All pasture-raised, all organic. I have coupon codes for Vital Choice Wild Seafood. I have coupon codes for Lehman's, which if you like homesteading, whether in the city or the suburbs or in the country, I think many of you are familiar with Lehman's and all the wonderful things they sell uh, for running a traditional home as well as a traditional kitchen. And I've got lots of discount codes uh, for the wonderful goodies that they sell. But one important discount code I want to share with you, because this is something that I have not seen available in retail stores, and that is the discount code I have for Mock Mill. And Mock Mill is a grain grinder. And I researched grain grinders for a very long time, and then I decided on Mock Mill. And I purchased my Mock Mill myself and paid for it myself, and I did an unboxing and I started using it. I'll be sure to link to that video below. And I just fell in love with my mock mill. And I contacted the company and they were so kind and they said that they would be happy to give a discount coupon code to me that I could then give to my viewers. And I know many of you have taken advantage of that and you love the mock mill as much as I do. So if you decide as you go on your journey from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen that you want to start grinding your own grain, which by the way, grain can last a lot longer in your extended pantry than flour. So if you decide you want to start stocking grain and grinding your own grain to make your own flour, definitely check out the mock mill. Do your research, but check out the mock mill. I think you're going to be very pleased with it. So be sure to check out my shopping guide. I have lots of other coupon codes that I think that uh, you'll find very helpful and it'll help you save money as you transition from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen. And those of you who have been with me for a while know I'm all about saving money. I'm all about staying within the budget. And that's why I talk about trying to find as much as you can at your local grocery store or the farmer's market or growing things yourself because when you make this transition from a processed foods kitchen to, the tr to a traditional foods kitchen, the last thing I want you to do is overspend because everything we're doing to move to a traditional foods kitchen is to improve our health and the health of our family and our friends, anyone that we're feeding. And busting the budget, so to speak, just causes stress. And stress is, it's a killer. Stress is not good for our health. So always do everything to stay within your food budget and move on this journey slowly. Slow and steady, as they say, wins the race. And you really will be successful over the long run and you will stay in your budget at the same time. Now, as I mentioned, the traditional foods umbrella is a pretty big umbrella. We master the basics. We learn how to make meals using the foods that we learn how to make. And then we learn how to stock our pantries. And part of this is also learning how to make home remedies. Now, before I start my discussion about home remedies, the first thing that I want to say is that I'm not a doctor. I'm a homemaker. So what I share with you is my personal opinion. But I will share that I am a big fan of integrative medicine. I believe in using modern medicine when we need it, and then I believe, on in, I believe in integrating home remedies to support whatever modern medicine we're using. And those of you who have been with me for a while know that I have spoken on a number of occasions about Dr. Andrew Weil. And he is a best-selling New York Times, New York Times best-selling author. He is a medical doctor, Harvard educated, but he's also considered sort of the modern day or be a modern day father of the integrative medicine movement. And he believes in using what Western medicine, modern medicine when appropriate, but also incorporating 
uh, via integrative medicine those remedies that may come from ancient cultures. They may be from Asian cultures, African cultures, European cultures, whatever the case may be. But he believes in incorporating these to treat the patient as a whole person and to make or take advantage of everything that's available in nature that can help the patient in addition to whatever modern medicine is being used. And if you're not familiar with Dr. Andrew Weil, I highly suggest reading about him and I'll be sure to put some links in the description uh, below if you're interested in learning more about him and more about integrative medicine. So what I want to say I'm not a doctor, so what I'm going to share with you are my personal opinions, and I highly recommend that if you decide uh, to integrate home remedies into your healing journey under the banner of the, your traditional foods journey, that you talk to your doctor or your pediatrician before you begin to incorporate home remedies into your healing journey. So under the home remedy section of our traditional foods umbrella, I've shared lots of home remedies with you, including a lot of recipes for immune-boosting foods. Now, of the home remedies, I have created a playlist of videos that I shared with you with what I called Master Recipes. And basically, Master Recipes outline for you the basic steps and amounts of things that you need to make a particular home remedy. I have a uh, home remedy master recipe for herbal teas, medicinal herbal teas. I have a master recipe for how to make medicinal ointments and salves. I have, master I have a master recipe for how to make medicinal herbal tonics. And going forward into 2022, I'm going to continue that series of master recipes because I think these can be very helpful for you. For example, the master recipe for how to make medicinal herb teas is a very popular video because herbal teas are a wonderful way to work home remedies into your healing journey and also just on a general basis to incorporate healing herbs into your diet in a very gentle way and in a very easy way. When I showed you how to make that master recipe, I made a follow-up recipe for how to make a what I call a good night sleep tea. It's a medicinal herb tea to help you get a good night's sleep. And that's also very popular. And I'll be sure to link to all of these in the description underneath this video. So you've got a lot of resources under this traditional foods umbrella. You've got the Mastering the Basics playlist. You've got multiple playlists on how to use those foods you learned how to make in Mastering the Basics to now make a lot of meals. Then you have a, another playlist, uh, very detailed on how to stock your pantry with real food on a budget, how to store it appropriately. And then you have another section of videos and a playlist for making Im immune boosting foods as well as home remedies. And those immune boosting foods uh, work very nicely with home remedies, so I've put them all together in a playlist for you. And I've got some wonderful uh, healing broths, super mineral broths. I even have some that are perfect for vegetarians. Now I do want to share with you a little healing journey story. As I shared with you, often no matter how uh, well you eat, uh, eating traditional foods and using home remedies, sometimes we all do fall sick. And over the last few weeks, my family and I were struck with the flu, among other things. And I have to say that all things considered, we fared exceptionally well and no one had to be hospitalized. And I really believe this is because of our traditional foods diet and our supplemental home remedies. Now we worked very close with our doctors, we stayed in touch with them, we made sure that we took any medications that they recommended, but overall we fared quite well. And I have to share with you something that I think is very appropriate when talking about having a well-stocked pantry when you do feel ill. 
Now, in addition to taking our fire cider tonic, in addition to taking our elderberry syrup, and uh, turmeric tea to tamp down inflammation and various home remedies like that, I also stumbled across a uh, product that was sold at my local grocery store in the health aisle called Bronchial Wellness. And I'll be sure to link to that in the description below if any of you are interested in learning more about it. I am very intrigued by this. I felt that it worked very well clearing out our bronchial, you're clearing out the flanges as my mother used to say. And uh, it's very natural and I am very interested in learning how to make that homemade because uh, I found that to be a wonderful uh, supplement to the home remedies that we already had on hand. And I will say that although garlic is always very popular when you're under the weather, I found it while I was ill very off-putting. But I did have ginger honey, and I've shared this uh, video and recipe with you. It'll be in the playlist of home remedies. And that was so soothing when I had a sore throat, and I would also add it to my turmeric tea, and it worked great. But regarding the pantry, what I want to share with you is I have a very sweet friend named Katie. I think many of you may know her as Miss Katie. And Katie has the wonderful YouTube channel called Heritage Ways. Well, Katie was so worried about us all being down and under the weather, and I'm the chief cook and bottle washer, so if I'm under the weather, the food preparation can get a little slim. But of course, we had bone broth and things like that. But Katie was very sweet and sent us a bunch of dehydrated soups that are made by, I believe it's called the Frontier Company, uh, and I'll be sure to link to those in the description below. But they came in so handy because as my husband was recovering, he was basically doing the cooking. And that's not really his forte. He, though I will say he's become a fantastic scrambled egg maker during all of this, but he could just dump that bag of uh, dehydrated vegetables and herbs and spices and whatnot into a soup pot and then add bone broth. And if he wanted to add extra protein, he could just open up a can of chicken. I often keep canned chicken in my pantry, both my working pantry and my extended pantry. And we had magnificent soups. They're so flavorful. And it's amazing how fresh they taste. So I'll be sure to link to those because I highly recommend that you keep some of those in your pantry, that if you are the chief cook and bottle washer, as I often say, and you need to have things that are very easy for your family uh, to prepare, uh, those can come in quite handy. Now, I also have a video where I show you how to put together kind of homemade soup mixes uh, that can come in handy as well, but these have such variety. We were really impressed and they're very tasty. And Miss Katie has a video, I'll be sure to link to it in the pinned comment so you can access it easily, where she shows you uh, where she's using one of these dehydrated soups and making a soup. She's kind of, as they say, zhuzhing it up a little bit. And so it's, uh, it's very nice to watch her uh, make that soup. So I'll be sure to link to that. But consider adding some of those to your working pantry and your extended pantry. I highly recommend them and they taste great. Now, as we go forward into 2022, I'm going to be expanding on all of these topics. I'm going to be uh, sharing with you more meals that you can make that are uh, uh, traditional nutrient-dense meals. And I'm going to focus on making meals that are very budget-friendly because I know right now many of us are operating under very tight budgets. Uh, foods have increased in price as have other things that have taken some of our money away possibly from our food budget. And yet at the same time, food prices are going up. And so I really want to focus on creating budget-friendly meals. And I'm also going to be spending more time on showing you how to make more homemade breads because making homemade bread is a wonderful money saver. And I have a recipe, I have a number of bread recipes for you already, and I'll be sure to link to those. But 
the most popular bread is my sandwich bread. It's a no-knead sandwich bread, and if you've never made bread before, this is going to be the easiest bread you've ever made. You literally mix it up, plop it in the pan, let it rise, bake it, and it's just like a beautiful sandwich bread. So if you're at the beginning of your journey moving from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen, and you need to make sandwich bread, you can make it very reasonably at home and it's going to taste really good and it's going to taste a lot better than what you can buy in that sleeve at the grocery store, that plastic sleeve. So definitely consider uh, get, trying, trying your hand at that. It's very easy, it's almost foolproof, and I'm confident you're going to be very pleased with it. That video has over a million views and I've gotten so many rave reviews from folks who have made the bread and are so pleased. They had never made bread before and they were so pleased with how it came out and it brings such joy to my heart uh, because these are often people who are at the very beginning of their traditional foods journey and when you have success it's just such a morale boost to you to continue. So definitely consider uh, giving that uh, homemade sandwich bread a try. So in addition to budget-friendly meals, more bread recipes, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm also gonna be continuing with more home remedies. Many of you have asked me about uh, how to make additional home remedies and more master recipes, and I'll definitely be covering all of that. And I will be going into more specifics with very detailed videos about the pantry and specifically the prepper pantry and even beyond that uh, how to set aside and spend I want to spend more time with you on emergency uh, prepper pantries so to speak those sections of your prepper pantry that you devote to stocking with emergency foods that really can get you through in the event that you have no power, you have no water, so on and so forth. I have one video about that, which I'll be sure to include in that Prepper Pantry series so that you can check that out. But I'm going to expand on that even greater as we go into 2022, because that has become a very important topic. Now, in a previous video, I discussed with you the importance of creating a kitchen journal. And I'm gonna be spending more time talking about that as we go into 2022. And the reason is, you really want to start a kitchen journal. And uh, in that video that I made previously, I share my kitchen journal with you, which I have right here. You can see it's pretty thick. <laughs> it's right here, this is just a homemade. I just started with a white binder and uh, hopefully there's not too much reflection from my overhead lights. But I highly recommend that you start to make a kitchen journal, especially if you are at the beginning of your traditional foods journey. And the reason that I say that is because when you begin to make these foods, whether it's bone broth, whether it's culturing dairy, especially if it's ferments, especially if it's sourdough, these things do take a little bit of trial and error. And often things need to be tweaked depending on the conditions in your kitchen or where you live, the weather where you live. So I highly recommend that you start tracking exactly what you do when, say for example, you make a ferment or, or say for example, you start your sourdough starter. What happened? Did things work out perfectly and you're pleased? Great. Then you repeat that. You've written those notes down and you can repeat that. Even though I have extensive videos and I walk you through step by step, everybody's kitchen is a little different. Where everybody lives is a little different. So you may need to make little tweaks here and there. And so if your first attempt isn't perfect, then on your second attempt you can make some tweaks. On your third attempt you can make some more tweaks. And I'm confident as you get into your second, third, and fourth time of making ferments and making sourdough starter, making bone broth cultured dairy, whatever the case may be, and making any of the recipes using those foods, you will find that kitchen journal where you have kept those notes invaluable. So definitely start that. We're gonna be spending more time talking about 
the kitchen journal. So just get a notebook. I like a, a three ring binder because I can hole punch things and stick them in there that I print out and whatnot. Uh, you can also print out any of the recipes that I share with you and start creating your own traditional foods cookbook uh, based on the recipes that I share with you. So a three ring binder works really great, but use whatever system works for you. Just start keeping track of these things and start keeping your notes. You are going to find that it is going to help you become a more successful traditional foods cook. I'd also like to hear from you as to what you would like to see me cover in 2022. I am very receptive to comments and when I see a recurring topic in comments, I will often make a video to address that. So if there is something that you're particularly interested in, maybe you're especially interested in transitioning from using white flour, like all purpose flour, to baking more with whole grain flours, let me know in the comments, because that is something that I'm going to be covering in more detail. We're gonna do a lot more baking this year, and we're gonna do both with yeast and without yeast and with sourdough, because I wanna help all of you, depending where you are on your continuum, of your journey from a traditional foods kitchen to a pro uh, <laughs> from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen and often many of you have shared with me you've never made bread and so you're just starting to make bread and i say please go ahead and use yeast learn how to make bread learn how to feel the texture of what the dough feels like and so on and so forth. And as you get farther down your journey, you're, you start to make your sourdough starter and your sourdough bread. So let me know in the comments, maybe it's bread baking and transitioning from white flour to, to whole grain flours. Maybe it's ferments that you're especially interested in. I have a lot of videos on fermentation and I'm gonna be sharing a lot more this coming year. Um, maybe you have some questions about cultured dairy. That's been a very popular topic lately because I know there have been a lot of shortages in various cultured dairy products and just dairy products in general at our local grocery stores. Maybe you're particularly interested in sprouting and sprouted flour. Whatever the case may be, leave it in the comments. I will be reading all of them and I will definitely be incorporating many of the things that you want me to follow or any of the things you want me to share with you based on what you've left in the comments and I will definitely be making videos about that. Now there's something important that I want to mention here because some of you have uh, mentioned to this to me in comments or emails and you're a little confused by it and so I want to address it and I want to clarify it. When you are on my home page on YouTube Underneath my banner, you know, where it has a little, my little logo, the heart that says Mary's Nest Cooking School and, and uh, the, the little verbiage that I have there, you may see a blue button, I believe it's blue, that says join. Please know that that is completely unrelated to all of the free videos that I share on YouTube. That is something that's completely separate. I have over 400 videos on YouTube. They're all free and I look forward to continuing this journey with you and I continue on planning making lots of videos that are completely free on basically the same schedule I've done since I started in the summer of 2018. But what that join button is, is that YouTube allows video creators to create a little membership community. And it's just a little membership community and it's really for those folks who are extremely interested in traditional foods and really want to deep dive into these subjects. And what I have in that membership community are what I call vodcasts. It's basically me talking for maybe an hour, an hour and a half on a particular traditional food subject and I'm talking in great detail. It really wouldn't be appropriate for a YouTube video. Uh, they are exceedingly long and very detailed, but they really are sort of the deep dive uh, for those of you who are interested in going into great detail about traditional foods and various traditional food subjects. So that's completely separate. And also in that group, if the membership group is something that would interest you, 
that is where I also have a once a month live to answer questions of uh, the people in my membership community who may have certain struggles with particular traditional foods, whether it's sourdough or ferments and so on and so forth. And so we spend about an hour uh, going over questions and chatting about traditional foods. So that's what the join group is. It's completely optional, nothing for you to worry about. You know, as I said, it's a real deep dive and I have uh, over 400 videos and who knows by the end of 2022, it'll be a lot more than 400 videos and they're all free and uh, they're very detailed, very step-by-step -step and perfect, really regardless of wherever you are on your journey. So know that I am here for you. Uh, really my goal here on YouTube is to be your trusted source for free information all about traditional foods. I have such a passion for teaching how to make traditional foods and it is very important to me that we keep these traditions alive and that I can teach as many people as possible in a large as in as large an audience as possible who then can teach others because we need to teach these we need to keep these skills alive and we need to continue to teach others especially young people these traditional skills because this is what allows us all to be as self-sufficient as possible and there's nothing more important to me than the fact that we all learn to be as self-sufficient as possible. So know that I am here for you and I am here on this journey with you. I've been basic, I was basically raised on traditional foods and I've been cooking traditional foods for years, but I'm still on my journey. And I'm here with you on this journey every step of the way. And so I really wanna be your trusted source for this type of information and I provide the majority of all of this information for free. And I have to share with you how much it has really touched my heart when you have left me in comments or you have sent me emails where you have shared with me that you have taught others what you have learned here and especially younger people, sometimes your children, sometimes your grandchildren, that brings me so much joy. So continue to teach, teach, and teach. And I want to say to those of you who are new here, if you want to join us on this journey and you have not subscribed to my channel yet, my YouTube channel, be sure to consider doing that. And if you do that, also click on the notification bell, which will let you know every time I upload a new video. We would love to have you join us on this traditional foods journey. And I just want to take a second to mention this book. This is Nourishing Traditions. I hope it's not getting too much of a reflection for you, but this is written by Sally Fallon. And this is a wonderful resource, especially if you are new to the traditional foods journey. I think most of you have been with me for a while, already have this book. And I know I've met many of you online because you had this book and you saw that I was making YouTube videos based on a lot of what's covered in this book. And you contacted me and said, I love nourishing traditions. So definitely consider uh, searching out this book. It's been out since 1999. I'll put a link in the description below, but uh, be sure to check used bookstores because I always see multiple copies at my local bookstores because it's been out, as I said, I think since 1999. So hopefully you can find that in your travels. You know, as I've done in past years, I've covered a lot of topics from Nourishing Traditions, and I will continue to do that as we go forward into 2022. 2020 and 2021 were very challenging years for so many of us. However, there were silver linings. I think we all learned a lot during these last two years. And now, as we can go into 2022, we're going to be a lot more prepared and a lot better educated on how to not only be prepared, but how to make traditional foods with simple ingredients that can feed us well, but feed us on a budget, and also feed us when food sometimes is in short supply. 
So as we continue on this traditional foods journey in 2022, we will be implementing so many of the things that we've learned over the last few years. And we'll really be kicking our traditional foods kitchens into high gear. We're going to have make wonder where we're going to make wonderful meals that are going to be budget friendly. We're, con, we're going to continue to stock our pantries and we're going to continue to make home remedies and we're going to continue to explore baking and explore baking in detail. And we're going to make sure that by the end of 2022, we can all claim the title of experienced home bakers. Well, I want to wish you a very happy and healthy and blessed new year as we go into 2022. And now, if you want to get started stocking your pantry, if you haven't already done so, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a complete playlist on why you need a prepper pantry, how to stock your prepper pantry with real food, and how to do it on a budget, and lots more. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Love and God bless.